Greetings one and all, it's I the Family Car Guy. Uh, we are driving through a lovely winter wonderland, the frozen tundra of Minnesota. Uh, Corvette season is officially over. There is no chance that I will be bringing the Z06 out of the comfort of its garage space at this point. There has been enough snow on the road now. Now today the roads are plowed and everything, but the temperatures are in the 20s and in the teens, and yeah, we're just, we're, we're done with Corvette season. Now, I did see a Atomic Orange Corvette, which looked like it was Z06, maybe, last, I think it was last Sunday, driving down the same highway that I take to head back home, and I was thinking to myself, either he's super brave, a super enthusiast, that's his only car, or he's just crazy, I don't know. Because uh, it looked to be the normal uh, super sports that were on that car. So, uh, by the way, shout out to Dirty Max Jack. He, uh, I was following his channel, and it looks like he went out and bought an Atomic Orange C6 Z06. So, congrats to him. And uh, I like to shout out channels that I think provide good content as well, and, and that are entertaining and and uh, maybe appealing to the community. So, uh, I'll I'll put his. Uh, his YouTube uh, channel in my uh, description. Anyway, topic of today's video is we are going to discuss real quickly uh, for your entertainment pleasure, kind of the story of my C6 Z06, how I went and picked it up. I did that for the C4. I'm going to do a little shorter version of that for the for the Z06. As you can see, I'm driving the family guy, the uh, family car guy winner winner vehicle of choice, uh, the Acura MDX. Uh, so here we go. So it actually started in July of 16. I started looking at um, I started looking at uh, Z06s uh, because originally my plan was to uh, I had a connection with a dealership and my goal was to to uh, form a relationship with them, which I did, uh, and basically get into kind of the car business. Well, I got my dealer's license, I got all those things, um, and I was going to flip cars, and I came across a couple of Z06s that I thought were a great deal. Well, upon looking into it, and into it further, I said, well, why don't I just kind of drive this car for a while and then flip it, you know, at basically at maybe in the spring or something like that. So that was kind of my plan. Um, so we got to about November, December-ish, and I found one on Craigslist that was owned by a police officer who was going through some kind of, you know, some personal challenges and he needed to liquidate. So, um, this particular car was located in Thunder Bay, Ontario, which is about five and a half, six hours north of the Twin Cities across the border to our neighbors to the north in Canada. So, one of the advantages of that was the exchange rate was favorable. So, in this case, uh, the car was a few thousand dollars cheaper in US dollars than it would have been if I was buying a car in the continental United States So there was an advantage there um, Also You could probably imagine that if it's the winter time in the Midwest or in the north uh, People don't want to store their cars because that costs money people don't want to winterize them and all that kind of stuff because It takes time it takes money uh, It's inconvenient so as, as a result of that the values of cars you know, it, it becomes more of a buyer's market at that time. So, in any case, uh, so now it's December of 2016. My friend John and I, we head up to, uh, we leave the Twin Cities about noon-ish, 1230-ish. We get to Grand, uh, uh, Grand Marais, which is the first, or I think it's, yeah, it's Grand Marais or Grand Portage, one of the the city right before you cross the border is the U.S. border crossing, and then maybe a hundred yards later, you're at the Canadian border crossing. Um, so we cross over to Canada. We get there about 6:30ish. Once you get into uh, Ontario, and you actually flip over to Eastern Time, so technically it was basically seven. Um, the guy I bought it from, he is about my age. Anyway. It, uh, he was, you know, he's a really nice guy, super accommodating. We, we drove the car around as much as we could, even though it was kind of, wasn't really any snow on the ground, but it was icy. Uh, so we had to be careful. Um, and the tires were definitely not, uh, not brand new. So 
got out my high powered flashlight, looked around the engine bay, checked to make sure there's no leaks or anything, looked at the typical spots. Uh, car looked immaculate, put it under the light, uh, and it was just, it, it just looked beautiful. So, um, so we go to his bank, which had ridiculously crazy hours, which worked out in our favor. I mean, they were open till like 8 p.m. on a Friday night, which is unheard of in my opinion. Um, and we did the exchange, bought the car, uh, we hung out overnight, uh, me, and, me and my friend John, we just grabbed a hotel, stayed overnight, drove back at like 6.30 in the morning, um, cause I needed to get back for an event. And it was a beautiful drive back down the Highway 61, North Shore, Lake Superior, drive back down towards the Twin Cities, beautiful drive. Uh, it was a little scary because there's a lot of deer up there for those who live in the Midwest area. So there was one time when I was passing a, a slow moving truck, didn't really even need to give it a lot of gas. Um, I had it in six gear, I didn't even downshift. And we were doing about 55, past the truck and he was pulling a trailer. No sooner did I pass the truck than uh, two deer come running across the road. So that was kind of nerve wracking, most nerve wracking part of it. The roads were completely dry. The very next weekend would have been a snowstorm. So it would have been basically dang near impossible to bring the Z06 back at that point. And I could not find any companies that were willing to do an international uh, car transport. So truth be told, I probably could have done some more research and maybe gotten that figured out, but time was of the essence and I just wanted to get it done. Uh, and for those of you who are married, when your wife gives you her blessing, it's time to act, not time to wait. Anyway, <clears throat> so how did I buy the car in terms of how did I pay for the car? So I actually, I should kind of title this video, what not to do, how not to buy a car from Canada. But the idea was, you know, me and the, me and the uh, previous owner, we were going back and forth because I was gonna give him a cashier's check. Well, cashier's checks, as most of you know, basically once you write a cashier's check, the money is out of your account, the, the bank is basically guaranteeing the funds, which is good. However, if you give a cashier's check to someone across the border, in this case, Canada, it takes, it's considered an international transfer, which means it takes five, uh, 15 business days which equates to effectively three weeks, if you include the weekend, um, for the check to clear, even though that it's been guaranteed by the bank. So uh, the previous owner's concern was, hey, you've got my Z06, you're comfortably back at home, and I'm still waiting another three weeks for my check to clear, which means you got my car. The check, if anything happens, if anything goes wrong, you've got the car and I've got nothing. So ultimately we compromised, and I ended up bringing cash across the border, which I was not comfortable with, but Again, compromise from, you know, the easiest way to explain compromise is both parties are a little bit uncomfortable. Both parties are a little bit unhappy, right? Both parties have to give. So that's kind of what happened. And, you know, so I ended up bringing money across the border. Uh, I did not declare it on the US side, but I did declare it on the Canada side. So we ended up having to flip back around because I forgot to declare it going out. So I did that. Um, and so of course they peppered us with a bunch of questions. What are you doing? Why, why are you buying the car? What is, you know, all these different things. Um, but it worked out great. The other thing you got to consider too, when you're buying a car um, out of state or in, in, out of the country, really, not really out of state, but out of the country, is you need to make sure that that car is NH NHTSA, National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Administration and DOT compliant, meaning crash test, the crash test worthiness and the EPA standards and all those things measure up to the US standards. Now the Corvette, as we all know, is built right here in the good old US of A. Uh, so all those stickers were on the car, so there, I didn't really have to prove anything because the car was built in the United States anyway, so it already complied with all those standards. So just some things to consider if you end up buying a car out of, out of the country, uh, particularly Canada, um, definitely check on the exchange rate and look and see, um, look and see uh, if it's favorable and if it's a good time for you to buy and if you know if you can score a deal. Uh, I ended up keeping a Z06 because my wife was basically like, "Hey, you don't know really do much for yourself. You do a lot for the family. Go ahead and keep it." So that was kind of like my Father's Day gift was to actually end up keeping the car. So and plus when I did list it, it wasn't getting exactly what I thought the car was worth. Um, so um, so it all worked out in the end. So now, do I, at the end of the day, I would have preferred a 3LZ um, because when you get a 3LZ, you get 
uh, you get the navigation, you get the Bluetooth, you get the uh, upgraded stereo, you get uh, the heated seats. But at the end of the day, why are you buying the car? You're buying the car for 505 horsepower and the six speed. That's basically it, right? So uh, ultimately, and the factory head units I've heard on the on the navigation, they're they're not that great. So I probably would end up swapping it out anyway. That was kind of the advice that I got from my my uh, uh, my neighbor who's got a Le Mans Blue 07 Z06. He basically he swapped out his head unit. And he ended up getting a two. I think it was a two LZ, and he swapped all that stuff out anyway. So uh, so I think that was fine. Um, the other thing that I would bring up is I really, I think right now is a really good time to buy a Z06. I really do. Because when you look at the prices, they're all in the mid 30s, mid to low 30s, some even high 20s if they have higher mileage. And you're getting so much car for the money. You're getting a car that basically is barely over 3,100 pounds. Uh, it's got 500 horsepower right out of the factory, 470 pound feet of torque right out of the factory. It puts a smile on your face. Is it as fast as some of the fastest things out there? No, it's not. I mean, you have, you know, you've got uh, Mustang GT500 that are putting out 662 horsepower. You've got Hellcats that are putting out 707 horsepower. But when you look at a Hellcat, for example, no disrespect to the Hellcat, but you're in, you're, you're in a car that's over a thousand pounds heavier uh, than, a, than a C6 Z06. You know, even the C7 Z06, even though it does have a lot more power, uh, is about 400 pound, pounds heavier. Uh, so you're getting, the, the, in terms of just pure thrill quality and, and forget about numbers for a second, forget about zero to 60 times, quarter mile times, all that. You just think about the pure excitement and joy that, that's on your, that you get on your face when you, when you uh, get behind the wheel of that car. That's, to me, that's a great, great, great point of entry. So anybody who's looking for a, 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 a fairly cheap way to go fast, C6 Z06 all day. Now the other thing is people mod their cars and they still, even with the mods, those cars are still selling in the mid to low 30s, maybe high 30s, maybe 40s, depending on if they're really new. Now, that being said, me personally, the Z06 that I bought has no mods. It was completely stock when I bought it. That's the way I wanted it. Um, because I would prefer to do the build myself. I just, I just, that's just my personal preference. I think that's part of the fun of it. Um, does that make it less of a value? Well, I think that's very subjective. You know, some people, I mean, if you have a car that's already got the heads, cam, the intake, all of those things are basically done and you buy the car for 35 grand, 34 grand, whatever the case may be. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I just think that, um, to me, that just kind of takes the fun out of it. So from a value standpoint, is it probably less? Sure. But in terms of getting the fun and the joy out of it, uh, to me, the part of the joy is actually building the car yourself. So that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and put an end to this video. Uh, thanks for uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, hope you guys have a blessed day and we'll see you guys in the next one.